For the next few minutes, we're going to be discussing healing in the realm of mental health. Matthew 28, 20 tells us, And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The Bible has a lot to say about storms. Sometimes it's talking about literal storms, where we have fearsome weather that seems really out of control. But more often, though, when the Bible speaks of a storm, it's referring to a set of adverse circumstances when negative events enter our life. A storm connotes struggle, trials, and tribulation. Storms seem to knock us over mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Our life is full of trouble, so at any given moment, you are probably going to experience rain, thunder, and hail. No one is exempt. Both the righteous and the unrighteous are affected by storms. Consider the book of Job. When I was processing my mom's multi-organ failure, my grandson's death, a full-time seminary schedule, and multiple surgeries, all under the weight of a demanding job, it left me drowning. The silence of the sanctuary and praying the Psalms kept me afloat and gave me peace. Depending on the circumstances, you can pray the Psalms of lament, thanksgiving, and praise. God clearly provided a helper for me when I needed it most, though I didn't see it at the time. I was so grateful our God tosses us a lifeline, even though we don't recognize who that lifeline is from. When I was walking through one of the most difficult seasons of my life, God showed me a powerful picture. It's okay if you thought you were over it, but then it hits you all over again. It's okay to fall apart even if you thought you had it under control. You're not weak. Healing is messy. There's no specific timeline for healing. Mental health challenges show up in a myriad of ways, from loss of confidence and sleep problems to anger, depression, poor concentration, and mood swings. People experience physical symptoms too, like dizziness, nausea, sweating, shaking, or trembling. Our bodies react in this way in an attempt to deal with the physical or the mental strain. But we aren't designed to experience them long term because it negatively affects our general health. One of the best tools to combat this was given to me by my lay learning partner in my congregation. And that's to question your thoughts, or as Leslie would tell me, don't go there. When you're stressed, it's easy to get yourself wrapped up in spirals of negative thinking. Although it's not always easy, try to take a step back from the situation that's causing you stress and view it as objectively and rationally as you can. Ask yourself, how important is this in the grand scheme of things? And if I stress out about this situation, is it going to make it any better? Once you've made this honest assessment, turn your focus into more positive things. List three things you're grateful for or have brought you happiness this week, either in your head listed or a piece of paper. The more you practice this, the easier it becomes. And soon you start putting a positive spin on situations without even realizing. Storms affect us all. That's why it's more important to focus on your response to life's storms rather than to seek to avoid or remove them. We must build our lives, homes, and families on the solid foundation of God's Word so we can withstand the storms that blow through life. As Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. This is from John 16, verse 33. We will have tribulation, Jesus says. That isn't negotiable. But in the midst of every storm, we can find the courage that comes from knowing the one who has overcome the world.